Hello, good morning and welcome to The United Stands. This is your latest Manchester United transfer news where we give it that real fan opinion. And I tell you what, this is the best show we've done in ages. You'll be saying this at the end. I've been so passionate about this show researching it because there's some really good stories that aren't, you know, the big headlines of Milinkovic, Savic and Ronaldo, but some really interesting stuff that I know a lot of you will like. So let's start off with 70... Manchester United have basically been offered a £70 million centre-back is the headline. And it is in the Daily Express, but the reality is when I tell you who it is you'll know that it's probably bloody factual anyway because it's common sense so Toby Alderweireld um, Spurs would sell Toby Alderweireld to Manchester United if we upped our alleged bid of 50 million pounds up to 70 million pounds well of course they bloody would of course they bloody would 70 million pounds for Toby Alderweireld who's going to be I think he's 29 now he's not had a great injury record wants to leave Spurs and they'd have to sell him for 25 million pounds in a year's time because he's got a release clause in a year's time of course they bloody sell him for 70 million pounds the reality is would United spend 70 million on, on Alderweireld and what would you think about that because the centre-back position is really really interesting I and mean, I've got loads to talk about so I don't want to dwell on this too much suffice to say Clement Longley who we've mentioned before from Sevilla he will be going to Barcelona like everyone thought he would that's going to be announced any time now um Koulibaly, uh, Skriniar, Bonucci, the other lad at Roma, uh, the other lad at AC Milan, Costas Manolas, um, and countless other centre-backs that we've been linked to make me believe that, that Mourinho clearly wants to bring a centre-back in. And But who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? It's not going to be Longley. And um, Alderweireld, I think, looks highly unlikely. I mean, I would not spend £70 million on Alderweireld because... £70 million is a massive, massive amount to pay for a player like that. And I know Van Dijk went for more than that, but that's Liverpool's problem. United shouldn't be spending that on a 29-year-old. Godin, maybe, you know, £18 million. I'm just chucking names out now. But you know what I mean? It's... It's it's too much money, and Manchester United that could be well over. That could be half our transfer budget on a player that technically I'm not so sure that we need. But very very interesting to see what United are going to do, and yeah, it may well be in the Express, but of course that's going to bloody happen, isn't it? Seventy million pounds, of course it is. Um, just very quickly about Alexandra, I'll bring Alexandra in here because I know a lot of you'll be interested in this. Um, Coriella della Sport via I read it via Sport Witness actually. Um, they've said that this talk of Manchester United agreeing personal terms with Alexandro is not true, and that Manchester United are very interested in Alexandro and they're monitoring the situation. But there's no pre-agreement or anything like that at all. Um, what may ha- what they say will happen though is if United do put an offer of between 50 and 60 million euros for Alexandro, that will instantly reignite Juventus' interest in Matteo Darmian, um, which is a no-bloody-brainer, isn't it? So I'm still... Look, the reality is we know Duncan Castle said that Manchester United had agreed terms, personal terms with Sandro, now it was all about a fee. Corriella della Sport, which is in Italy, are saying there's no... any No, no agreement's been done, but if United do offer the money then the events will take Darmian. Reading between the lines, it doesn't matter what you believe and what you don't believe. It sounds very optimistic about Alexandro and hopefully United will get that done. Although a big part, not a big part of me, a little part of me just thinks Ashley Young's definitely staying. What's going on with Luke Shaw? He's training, he's back. We won't have three left backs, so what is going to happen with Luke Shaw? But I think the Alexandro deal does really, really need to happen. Um, Jetson Fernandez. Actually, no, this, this will work better if I say this first. So yesterday there was uh, there was reports coming out that Jesse Lingard, when he returns from the World Cup, will be given a new uh, £150,000 a week contract. Now, it's interesting because it was about 14 months ago he was given a new contract, which was reported to be about £100,000 a week. I think I reacted badly to that and I think a lot of people reacted badly to that because a year 14 months ago Jesse Lingard wasn't the player he is now and it was like 100 grand a week for a player like that you know what 150 grand a week for a player that Jesse Lingard is now is spot on and the lad totally deserves it I'm going to say that without any malice without any agenda I think that he does my thing with Lingard is that he's a Manchester lad he gets what Manchester United's all about all the social media stuff he does he's very good at it I'm too old for it a lot of it I don't get a lot of it but the kids love it and by the by you know sometimes it's irritating when in the season we're not doing very well and you see the dancing and everything like that that irritates me and I'm of the Roy Keane school of football where he probably needs it ramming down the toilet or ramming somewhere else but that's a generational thing, and Pogba does it as well. So the social media thing is by the by. When you look, when you're judging Lingard, he should be judged on the pitch. And you know what? He's had a really, really good twelve months. I would not ever want him to be sold because there's few and far between of players that actually 
have come through the ranks, know what the club's about, or even are English. I mean, look at the English team. Apart from Pickford and Maguire, the first eleven are all spur, all top four. They're all they're all top four players. So um, look at Arsenal. Where are their English players? So I'm proud of our English players, and I'm even more proud of the players that have come through the youth system because that's that's massive. What I would say about Lingard is, to me, I don't think you can win a title with Lingard playing every single game of the first team. I think he's a squad player, a very important squad player, like people like Solskjaer were in the past, Phil Neville was in the past, O'Shea was in the past, Wes Brown was in the past. Very important, will still play and start a lot of games, but to win a title, I don't think he's a first-teamer. But he's a very important player. I mean, Marcus Rashford's not a first-teamer either. So it's not a it's not a slight on them at all. But 150 grand a week in today's market, I think he's worth that. I don't have any issue with that. I saw a few people saying, oh, this is why we're struggling, keeping Deadwood players like that. I understand the argument that maybe Lingard shouldn't be starting as many games as he does, does but I'd never want to sell him. I think as a bench player, as an impact player, the runs he makes, very, very important. So that le- gives you thoughts on that one because I think that's quite a big one. Um, Jedson Fernandes, uh, this came from Sport Witness via, uh, via O Jogo in Portugal, basically reporting that Roma and Manchester United and one of the club were interested in him, going as far as to say that Roma had offered around £20, 20 million. Pounds. So who is he? You won't know a lot about him some of you might do I did a little bit of digging myself spoke to a couple of people on Twitter who 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 are you know we've done deals and we've been linked to players a lot in the past through Benfica so there's a couple of contacts that I've picked up over the years and asked them about this Fernandez because apart from going and looking at YouTube clips for Benfica B which I don't really want to do wanted to get a bit of a background of him whether United are in for him or not, I mean, you can take it with a pinch of salt or you can say, well, the lot happened as a youth player. That could happen. Maybe that's where we're scouting a lot around Portugal because there's a lot of good players coming through. So what's he all about, Jensen Fernandes? He's at Benfica. He's six foot. I think he's about 19 years of age. He's not really played any first team football as far as I'm aware, but he's highly you know, talented, scouted and uh, anticipated to be a, a really good player of the future what I've sort of been told and all I can tell you is that he's a bit like a Jesse Lingard with phys- he's a bit like a physical Jesse Lingard um, who can you know put tackles in hold himself and, and play in the centre midfield he can play out wide but he's more of a centre midfielder uh, but the way he moves the way he passes uh, the way he shoots is quite similar to Lingard but he's got that tenacity and body strength that Lingard hasn't had so that's you know that that sort of player I mean to be honest with you I've always going back to Lingard I think if Lingard was a couple of stone heavier or even a stone heavier and a bit more physical then it'd be a little bit of a better player so it's interesting I mean whether anything will happen with this Fernandez kid I don't know but it is an interesting player and uh, another young player um, would, would be a, a welcome addition to United but whether anything happens with it or not, I don't know, but I think it's quite interesting. Uh, a couple of other things to mention as well. I just want to say, we mentioned Shakiri yesterday, and he's come out and said that he's going to announce his future very soon. Obviously, he's been part of the national squad for Switzerland, focusing on that, which is fair enough. Uh, United have sort of been mentioned, but I think Liverpool is more likely. I just think that ho- I think and hope that United are being mentioned just so Liverpool can say they got one over us again. Because uh, reading a lot of your comments and sort of summarising it, I-, I agree with a lot what a lot of people said after I mentioned Shakiri yesterday, which is that why would we sign? Shakiri. Um, he he's doesn't solve the right midfield pr- problem because he's left footed. He's just the same as Matter. He always comes inside, so he doesn't give us any natural width. He's lazy in the fact that he doesn't really track back, which is something that Mourinho doesn't like from Martial, which is a bit mythical because Martial does track back, but Shakiri doesn't really track back. He's massively inconsistent, and actually, when you compare him to Sanchez, Rashford, Martial, Lingard, Matter, you could argue that he's, he'd come sixth in there, maybe fourth or fifth, but certainly not any better than Sanchez, Martial, Rashford, and probably not Lingard. Maybe Matter because Matter's not playing as much. But so why is a player like that, even if he's cheap or free? Why why does that why is that a signing that United are looking at? So yeah, I do agree with a lot, a lot of you there. I would I, I don't see what Shakiri would bring to Manchester United, and the most important thing is is he's inconsistent, and that to me is not what United need because United have been inconsistent in the Premier League the last year or two and we need consistent players to make us consistent I mean look at Pogba inconsistent he needs to be consistent Uh, also reports I think yesterday in the Sun but I I read it in a couple of places actually that Eric Bay has demanded uh, uh, talks with Mourinho to establish what his role is I think whether that's paper talk or not it would be common sense again a bit like Toby Alderweireld I'm sure Spurs would let us have him for 70 million it's whether we should pay that um, but Eric Bay, what happened last season was just baffling the last few weeks of the season because it was he was clearly fit 
and he wasn't being used. And Mourinho came out with this, yeah, I'm using players who've got a chance of going to the World Cup. But he was using Chris Smalling, who Gareth Southgate had said months before was never going to the World Cup. So if you've got, and I like Smalling, but if you've got a choice between Bay and Smalling, you play Bay. I mean, Bay's only been here two years. He's probably only played just over a year because of injury and things like that. So he needs games. Why weren't we playing him at the end of last season? And why were we playing Smalling, who had no chance of going to the World Cup? So I think Eric Bay's position needs to be clarified. But then you hear things like, well, Manchester United want to bring a centre-back into the club to play with Bay. My personal stance is, and he's playing, this, he's playing tomorrow against England, is that Lindelof and Bay would make a great pairing. But there's massive question marks over both, which is really weird because Mourinho bought them both. He inherited Jones and Smalling and Rojo. He actually bought Bay and Lindelof. They're his signings. If they do well, they reflect on him. But he's not playing them. He's not played them at all together, I don't think, since last November. And consistently, even if they have a good game, especially in the case of Lindelof, he'll take him out to bring Jones back in. So Mourinho needs to sort his centre-backs out, and I'm sure there will be tap chats with Eric Bay because, to me, if we don't sign a centre-back, it has to be Bay and Lindelof as our centre-backs. I think they'd work really well. But let's see what happens with those two because um, um, it, it, it will be interesting. It will be very interesting to see what happens. Anyway, uh, let us know what your thoughts are then. Toby Elder, the centre-back situation, effectively, sort of going back to that. Toby Alderweireld, would you pay £70 million for him? If not, how much would you pay? Or do you think we should be looking elsewhere? Because... Longley is gone. What are the options as a centre-back? Give us your thoughts on that. Lingard, £150,000 a week. Is he worth it? What do you see as his role at Manchester United now? Really want to get your opinions on that. Sandro, he's still confident. Jedson Fernandes, do you think we should be looking at more youngsters from, from Portugal? Does he sound interesting to you? Eric Bay, who would you have as your first choice centre-backs next season? And um, yes, that's about it. But I hope you enjoyed the show. Very different, isn't it? When you, you know, you're not having to focus on Milinkovic, Savage or Ronaldo. A little bit more meat on the bones and stories that actually impact on Manchester United. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do drop a like on the video and I'm back again tonight at nine o'clock because the World Cup's on. So not eight o'clock, nine o'clock UK time tonight, unless something happens in between, which it could do. Thanks for watching. Having a great, have a great Friday. The World Cup is back. And if you're English, it's very exciting, but United still matters and we'll still be pumping out the content, interacting with you. So give us your thoughts on all that and have a good day. Speak to you soon.